Hey, how are you doing? Uh, back for some more histology, huh? Got my box of slides. This is going to be a very chill because <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Second year exams last week, first year exams next week. I'm battered, so I need to use my brain not much. Um, no, I'm not even making good sentences, am I? We're going to have a very visual look at the tissues of the body. You know, if you think about cells and tissues and how we're made up, it seems incredibly complex. Really, we're made up of four tissues. Epithelium, muscle, connective tissue, and whenever you have a list, you always forget the fourth one, don't you? Uh, nervous tissue. Let's just have a look at those, see what they look like. Get used to looking at these different tissues and you'll get used to seeing what they look like and it'll make looking at these things in the future easier when we have like lots of tissues mixed together. You'll see what I mean. So we'll take each one of those in turn, not a lot of detail, but a lot of, a lot of looking, okay? Right. Shall we start with um, some epithelium? So we find epithelium everywhere. You find epithelium covering your external surfaces and you find epithelium covering the external surfaces inside you, like the airway, um, like the gastrointestinal tract and that sort of thing, right? So if we were to look at some skin, human skin. Um, ooh. Brighten that up a little bit, focus it in. This is a low power. Um, look at those, so the, the green stuff here, this is all connective tissue, supportive tissue. But that brightly colored tissue there, those layers of cells that we see there, let's zoom in a little bit, give it a little bit more light. Look at that. So that's an epithelium. Um, this is plantar skin, skin of the foot. So this is thick skin. And we're seeing a layer of cells there. We're seeing a layer which are germ cells, uh, progenitor cells, that are going to continually produce new epithelial cells because the, the surface of your skin is lost as you abrade it against the world. Um, and new cells are continually being made to reproduce those lost cells. So we're seeing layers and layers of cells here. So that's an epithelium. Very, very cellular. You can see that the, the layers of the epithelium have slightly different looks, so they have slightly different functions. Um, and the cells in this case, they're kind of flat, right? These are squamous cells, they're flattened cells. But that is one form of an epithelium. That's an epithelium in the skin, an epithelium on the outside of the body. Um, but I said we also have epithelia inside the body. Let's look at the small intestine. So the gastrointestinal tract runs all the way through us, right? So it's, a, it's an external surface inside us. We pass food through that external tube inside us and we digest the nutrients from it. Um, so these layers up here, these are muscle, we'll get to muscle later, but this down here, this is covered by an epithelium. Now we're seeing a lot of strange shapes here, uh, and if you remember what we talked about in the last video, what, how we're cutting very, very thin sections, we've got, we've got villi sticking up like that, and they're being cut in all sorts of different planes to give us, give us this view. But let's, let's zoom in a bit. So now you can see our villa. So we're just looking at the surface layer of cells. Zoom in again. A bit more light. So it's that. So the white is the lumen, right? The white is where there is nothing. There is space there. And the cells up against that are the epithelium. 
and they look different to the epithelium of the skin. These are long, tall cells. They're columnar cells. And maybe... See if I can get in here then to muck about too much. Don't want to go to such a high power, I have to put oil on the lens, too much of a faff. Also, I haven't got any oil handy. Um, but this is also an epithelium. These tall columnar cells, and we can actually see a brush border there. Can you see that the edge here, the, the surface of those cells, there's another, there's another edge there. And what we can't quite see there, there, is, there are more microvilli, projections of the cell membrane, increasing the surface area as much as possible. Because these epithelial cells are all about the absorption of nutrients into uh, the blood vessels and the lacteals inside the villus. So that's another form of an epithelium. And then the, the airway, so trachea, the windpipe, right? The trachea is an external tube inside us, an external surface inside us. So that must also have an epithelium then. Hmm, what's, uh, what's going on with this one? So we are seeing the cartilage rings here. So that tissue is cartilage. We'll come on to that later. Here we can come back to that. Um, but that's the lumen there, the, uh, the white space. So these cells up against the lumen are also an epithelium. They kind of don't look like either of the cells we've, been, we've, we've seen in the skin or the gastrointestinal tract. But again, it's very, very cellular. There are lots of cells. They're all packed together. And here they're kind of overlapping a little bit. So this is also an epithelium, but it's a slightly different epithelium. Um, now, if we were to look at the lung, 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 lung. Uh, the, so the trachea is carrying air down to the lung. So it has a slightly different job to the lung itself. Um, but here is, this is lung tissue. Look at that, it's, uh, it's turned the brightness down a bit. This is lung tissue. <laughs> Not too surprisingly, lung tissue is mostly air. Um, but we have epithelia here all the way down. So the cells lining the external surface inside us, the cells lining the lumen, those are the epithelial cells. Hmm. They look similar to what we saw in the trachea. Lots of cells, very cellular, really packed together there. Uh, we've got some fat, so we've got some, fat's the wrong word, but some round shapes in amongst them. So these are going to be cells that are secreting mucus uh, onto that surface. And the other thing that we can see, uh, whereas in the gut we saw a brush border of microvilli which were increasing the surface area, uh, here we can see another appendage. It looks like they're a little cilia. Um, projecting, so cilia are different to microvilli, but these cilia are projecting from the, uh, the cell membrane of those epithelial cells, again, up against the, the internal border. Um, and this must be an airway then. So, yeah, there's a bigger space in there, that's an airway. Whereas in here, it all looks a little bit different again. That epithelium looks different. Looks, looks quite a bit thinner, right? So we're just looking. We're just looking to see what epithelia look like. And they are very cellular. They're up against an external surface. Um, and they're forming a sheet, aren't they? They're forming a sheet 
lining the inside of a tube or lining uh, an external surface. All right, so that's epithelia. Tissue type number two, connective tissue. Uh, <laughs> not quite my favorite type of tissue, but um, connective tissue is the most common tissue in the body. It's everywhere. It holds everything together. It gives everything shape, gives everything structure. Connective tissue is everywhere. So it covers things like cartilage and bone and fascia and all sorts of things. Speaking of bone, uh, well, let's have a look at this. Actually, mm, let's have a look at this this joint first. This is, uh, so this has got quite a few tissues in it. Now, let's focus that. That hopefully looks quite different to you. If I zoom in again, I guess it, it still looks pretty cellular, but can you see how the cells are not as packed together as they were in the epithelium? The cells are spaced out. So in a connective tissue, you have cells that maintain and look after the connective tissue, and they're usually load sensing as well. So they, they adapt to, what, to whatever loads are required to change the connective tissue. And in the connective tissue, oh, here we go, look at this. So this is cartilage here. So in the connective tissue, what we can't see, this, it looks white because it's not labeled. We've got lots of fibers. We've got collagen, which gives it strength. And there are lots of different collagens for lots of different functions. Um, and there will be elastin. So elastic fibers in some connective tissues, giving it a little bit of stretch. And the ground substance that we talk about, um, oh, reticulin, that's another fiber. That's a much smaller fiber, so collagens elastins, reticulin, we might find all sorts of fibres in there holding it all together, which are invisible to us now because they're not stained. And also in the space between the cells is, is the ground substance that the fibres are embedded in. And that ground substance is filled with um, glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans, um, which hold on to water and exert pressure. So I used to work on cartilage uh, during my postdoc years um, and my PhD years. Now this cartilage here, so you can see that we've got cells. So these cells are pretty busy making some cartilage. This is pretty young cartilage. Now as we move in this direction, you can see that the cells of the cartilage, the chondrocytes, were arranging themselves into columns. And this is part of a process called endochondral ossification. And look at this, at the end of these columns, they're making bone. So this is what bone looks like. Um, completely different again. So we're looking at fewer cells, more spaces, and you know the structures of hard bone forming a different function. So bone is a connective tissue. Cartilage is a connective tissue. Let's turn that down a bit. And like I say, connective tissue sheets, fascias, connective tissue. There are lots of connective tissues in the body. You know, I said the, uh, I said the, we saw in the trachea, we saw some cartilage. So if you go back to the trachea, that there, does that look familiar? So we can see to the left of the screen, we can see the epithelium lining that internal surface. And then most of the ring there, most of the thickness of the ring is cartilage. So we have these cells, these chondrocytes, living in their, their little spaces, their little lacunae, uh, maintaining the extracellular matrix around them. So the cartilage itself is made up of fibers, a lot of collagen, ground substance, glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans, which are holding in the water, um, and the cells are maintaining all of this. So that's connective tissue. What else have I got here? Oh, I've got another bone. So I've got, um, I've got kind of older bone, proper bone. See what this looks like. So this is this has got a very classic look. Um, this has got a different stain, so it's black. Look at that though. It's like the surface of the moon or something. So we've got these black circles which are 
canals. So imagine the plane of section that we're cutting through there. And we can see few cells arranged kind of carefully. Lots of extracellular matrix. In this case, the extracellular matrix is mineralized, forming that hard bone. This is what we call an osteon, this arrangement. So these cells are spaced out, but they, sell, they send processes out to one another, so they're connected, they can communicate. So bone is a connective tissue. So connective tissues, slightly, a little bit less cellular, fewer cells, more extracellular matrix. Okay, tissue number three, muscle. Um, there are different types of muscle. So muscle is a tissue that can um, change its length, right? It has, well, let's have a look at this. This is skeletal muscle. So this has got a different stain because it's going to help us see some of the microfilaments inside the muscle. But hopefully you can see that <laughs> it's very black. But you can see that we've got, this is a, a longitudinal section, we can see things running lengthwise. And those are the cells, those are the myocytes, those are the muscle cells. Um, and what happens with skeletal muscle is that there are lots of cells and then they all join together, lose the cell membranes in between them and become very, very long cells. Let's see if I can find a nice patch. Um, so that's why... Oh, that looks good. That's why we are seeing lots and lots of nuclei. So we're seeing those, those dark oval bodies, those are the nuclei of the cells, but we're seeing very, very long cells, those, those white lines across them, those are artifacts, so we've had some breakages here. But these are multinucleated cells. The, the muscle cells can be very, very long. I mean, they can be, like, well, they can, they can be very long in us, but imagine how long they are in a blue whale. Um, and uh, the nuclei are around the outside because the contractile machinery is on the inside. So most of the internal structure of the, of the muscle is taken up by microfilaments running along the length of the muscle. And skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle gets called striated. Can you see the stripes running widthways across the muscle? So what we're seeing here is there are microfilaments running the length of the muscle, we can kind of get a sense of that in some of those sections there. And these microfilaments, which are mostly actin and myosin, they, they overlap with one another and they can walk along one another in either direction and that requires energy and calcium to be pumped in and out. Um, so the muscle can get shorter and the muscle can get longer, but the muscle can generate a force. So it can generate a force without changing its length as well. So what we're seeing in this striated muscle is we're seeing where the actin and the myosin overlap and where they don't overlap, which gives us lighter bands and darker bands, and where segments of actin and myosin meet, giving us other bands. So this is skeletal muscle. It looks quite different to connective tissue. Um, it looks quite different to epithelial tissue, um, skeletal muscle. So that's one form of striated muscle. Here's the heart. So this is a more normal stain. Does that look a little bit similar? We can see some very long cells. But actually we've got multiple cells. Um, forming those long-looking cells. Those multiple cells are joined together quite well so they can communicate. So in the heart, um, these are also, can you, I don't know if you can see the striations yet, this is also a striated muscle cell, but these cells are very well connected because
they need to contract in a coordinated manner, right? Where are we? Maybe around there somewhere. So again, we've got microfilaments inside them. So where they overlap, we can see some striations. You can see why the other special stain helped us see the striations because they're not quite so easy to see here. But if I get the focus right and you look carefully, we can see those striations. We can also see right in the middle there um, an intercalated disc. So there are intercalated discs joining the cells so that the atria and the ventricles contract in an organized manner to push blood through the heart. So this is cardiac muscle. Looks a little similar. We're looking at a different plane of section there. Looks a little similar to skeletal muscle, but a little bit different. Pretty nice. And then the other form of muscle is smooth muscle. So smooth muscle, if we go back to the gastrointestinal tract, the gastrointestinal tract is a muscular tube because it propels its contents along. So it's also largely made up of muscle. There's the epithelium and the villi again. Well, this is large bowel, so it's not really villi. But there's the epithelium lining the inside of the tube. And as we go towards the outside of the tube, we can see two layers of muscle. There is circular muscle and longitudinal muscle. This is smooth muscle. Now if we, let's zoom in here uh, and see what we can see. These are individual cells, so they, they look different. This is muscle. It looks different again, doesn't it, to skeletal muscle. Um, if we look at this here, this is a transverse section. We've got a little bit of... The banding is um, a bit of a staining artifact, but oh, there we go. You can see that we've got lengths of muscle there, right, I think. And those are smooth muscle cells joined together. So these smooth muscle cells have got a nucleus inside them. Um, and this is what smooth muscle looks like. I say the, the banding's not, not the best here, but... Here we go, that's, that's not too bad. So that's smooth muscle. We don't see the same striations. Um, it looks a little bit different. But again, I think you can see those lengths that they're all going to pull along to cause a contraction. Okay, we've looked at epithelium, connective tissue and muscle. The only one left is nervous tissue. Hopefully you're seeing these, these tissues are looking quite different, right? Let's have a look at a peripheral nerve first. Now I think nervous tissue looks quite weird. If we consider what muscle looks like and cartilage looks like. Um, here's a peripheral nerve. So we've got some connected tissue around the outside bundling it all together. I can see some fat cells there as well, which are a form of connective tissue. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, nervous tissue, so we've got neurons, which have got axons that run, again, very long distances. Like muscle cells, these can be really big. Um, but there are more supporting cells in nervous tissue than there are neurons. For example, if uh, the neurons are myelinated, if they have you know, that, um, that myelinated insulating sheath that speeds up action potentials running through them, um, you have Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system and oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system. And you have neuroglia cells that you know, maintain the extracellular matrix around the neurons, um, getting rid of pathogens and debris and that sort of thing. So we often see quite a few nuclei, but those are the supportive cells, unless we're looking at um, a ganglion, where the nerve cell bodies are. What we're mostly looking at are, um, see, there's a lot of space there, there's a lot of unstained stuff, because we've just got the axons of neurons. I think, oh, hey, look at that there. Uh, 
Um, it looks quite different to the connective tissue. It's got these long streaks in it, like muscular tissue, but it doesn't look like a muscle. Sometimes it gets a bit wiggly with big spaces in between, but that's usually because of an artifact of preparing the section, you know, fixing and sectioning and that sort of thing. So this is a peripheral nerve. Um, and the, the tissue around the neurons is... It, it, there's a lot of water in there, there's a lot of iron, so the, the extracellular matrix, the extracellular tissue fluid around the neuron is quite carefully maintained so that the, the ions, the, the components needed for nerves to transmit uh, action potentials are, are present. Um, so that's a peripheral nerve. For our final section, we're going to look at spinal cord. Now have a look at the spinal cord. Spinal cord is really weird. Cool tissue. <laughs> so we talk about grey matter and white matter. So the grey matter in the spinal cord, that's that... This is as low power as I can go. But that's that butterfly shape that we're seeing there. So the grey matter, we've got neuron cell bodies, we've got connections, synapses. Whereas the white matter is outside that. And we're seeing quite a lot of space there, quite a lot of circles. And then we're seeing connective tissue around the outside, holding all this together. If we look at the grey matter, Look at that. Isn't that quite strange? Quite unlike everything else that we've seen. Very strange looking. So we've got neurons, neuron cell bodies here, as well as the, the supporting cells. And we've got synapses between neurons. Whereas if we, so that's, the, that's gray matter. If we slide sideways into the white matter, so the white matter tracts are neurons ascending up and down the spinal cord to and from the brain. So these are transverse sections around neurons. So that's why we're seeing what we're seeing here. And the white matter, the reason it's white is because most of these neuron axons are surrounded by myelin to speed up the rate of action potential propagation. So we're seeing a lot of fat here. We're seeing, uh, uh, we're seeing oligodendrocytes um, putting myelin, putting a form of fat around the, the axon. Um, and then we're cutting a cross section through that. So that looks totally unlike epithelium, very unlike connective tissue, very unlike muscle. This is nerve. I think that's very cool looking. If we slide back down into the gray matter, Look at that. Don't want to go a little bit higher power. So, this was a very visual thing. That was the aim, to just look and get a sense of what these tissues really look like. So we wanted to look at the four main tissue types of the body. Epithelial tissue, we have connective tissue, we have muscle tissue, we have nervous tissue, and they all work together to form, to form this. So when studying anatomy, we do need to consider the, the building blocks, the cells that are responsible for putting the body together. And then we need to consider the tissues that they make. And then we can understand how the tissues work and we can better understand the gross anatomy. Anyway, I hope that was interesting and useful. Um, just to look at the main tissues. In the future, we can look at individual tissues. And, well, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Or part of the issue. If you look at a structure in the body, it's made up of multiple tissues. You look at the gut, you see, you see the epithelial lining, you see connective tissue holding it all together, you see the two layers of muscle, and of course there are nerves in there, there are blood vessels supplying all of this. So when we look at the histology of parts of the body, we see all these tissues. And when we get used to recognising what these tissue types look like, it gets easier for us to work out what we're looking at down the microscope. That was the aim. All right, see you next week, if I survive the first year exams.